Hey everybody, I'm Justin Roth, and I'm here today as an artist, a teacher, and a big fan of Jacob Collier's. I'm gonna teach you a surprisingly accessible way to understand how he constructs and voices his chords when he's in his favorite altered tuning. Now we've heard him use his tuning on a bunch of songs, Little Blue, Never Gonna Be Alone, Time to Rest Your Weary Head, In Too Deep, Summer Rain, and more to come. Now I made a tutorial video for Little Blue already and I covered some of this, but that video got pretty long and what I realized is that the more songs of his that I've been examining, the more I realize I need to make this video because this one is gonna serve as a supplement to all the other songs that he arranges for acoustic guitar when he's using this tuning. So if you enjoy Jacob's acoustic versions of his songs, smash that like button, click that bell notification, and stay tuned for when I release new Jacob tutorials. Also, in the comments below, let me know which songs you would like to see first as a tutorial video. So we are gonna take a deep dive together and we're gonna cover a few main topics. First, we're gonna look at his favorite alter tuning, the one that he's been using for most of these songs. Next, I'm gonna show you some tricks to compensate for the fact that many of these are on his custom five string guitar. Now I'm certain that none of you have a five string guitar. We all have six strings. So there's a couple tricks to be able to compensate for that. Now the really great thing about this alter tuning and the way that Jacob uses it is that most of these chords are built on only three strings, only three notes. Now we know that Jacob hears music in an otherworldly sort of way. And the way that he arranges his chords serves a complex harmonic function, but the chords themselves on acoustic guitar are not complex or difficult to play. So my goal for you in this deep dive lesson is to get your feet wet by showing you how accessible it is to actually play these songs as a guitar player. I will also be sure to throw you a line to keep you from drowning in music theory, but I wanna shed enough light on them so that when we resurface, you have a better understanding of how the chords are constructed and how the shapes are related to one another. So grab your guitar, let's dive in. You've been making me feel lonely, baby. First, let's remember that the shapes we're learning today will apply to many of Jacob's songs. He doesn't use every one of the shapes that I'm gonna show you today in every song, but they are going to be the basic chords that you will always be drawing upon when you're learning his acoustic versions. So his favorite alter tuning on his five string guitar from low to high is D, A, E, A, D. Now for us commoners with six string guitars, what I suggest doing is leaving your third string, your G string, tuned to G. So we would have D, A, E, G, A, D. Now we get to this tuning by lowering our six string, our low E down one whole step to D. Our A string will stay the same. Our D string, our fourth string, will go up one whole step to E. Now it is my suspicion that Jacob has a lighter gauge string than a standard fourth string gauge, whether you're on light or medium gauges. This would help minimize breaking a string by adding more tension to the string. Next, the third string will stay at G. Then our second string, the B string, will go down a whole step to A. And our first string, the high E, will go down a whole step to D. Now there might be some songs that be more suited to have a slight variation on this tuning by maybe changing that third string, but that'll be on a song by song basis. But all the chord shapes we're gonna cover are going to work over any one of those variations. And the reason that is, is because the lowest three strings, the D, A, and E, are where most of these chords are constructed. The relationship of the tuning of those lowest three strings tuned in fifths D to A is a fifth, A to E is a fifth. And even with the other tuning variations that I will touch on a little bit later, we will keep that fifth relationship in those lower strings so that the chord shapes themselves still work. Now some of his songs have over 30 chord voicing variations in his arrangement. 
However, I have found that there are only six primary shapes that cover 95% of the chord shapes that he uses. Now we've all seen and heard how complex Jacob's songs are composed harmonically. And if you see a chord diagram for a guitar in standard tuning, they're probably chords that you have never played before and are difficult for your left hand to play. Now Jacob isn't up there on stage playing his acoustic guitar looking like he's working hard on the guitar. That's not entertaining. He wants to stay focused on his performance and yet get the harmonic complexity that he needs for his songs from the guitar. This alternate tuning gives it to us with simple, repeatable, movable shapes around the neck. So I want your primary focus to be on learning and understanding the shapes. Now before we continue, I want you to pause the video and click on the link in the description below to go to my Patreon page. There you'll find a free PDF to be able to download chord diagrams of all these shapes that I'm about to show you. All right, let's take a look at the chords. Now, because we're not working on a particular song, I'm going to build all of these shapes just in one location on the neck for today, just so you can see how closely related they are. Of course, in a song, it's going to move around the neck, but we're just focused on the shape and how we're fingering them with our left hand. Now let's take a look at our major chord shapes. We have three variations. We have root position, first inversion, and second inversion. Let's take a look at each of them. So root position means the lowest note or the bass note that we play is the root of the chord. Starting on the fifth fret, for the sake of example, we have five, five, seven. Root, fifth, third. Now for all the root position chords, our third of the chord is going to be on that fourth string. And we'll see why in a minute. So now our that's our root position major chord. And this chord shape can be moved all over the neck. So in, in a song, he might be playing this particular shape in one, two, three, four, or five different locations. Because he modulates, he tends to use these chords over and over again. So our major chord in first inversion shape is gonna look like this. We have five, six, six. Now the way that the notes are stacked here is we have the third in the bass. Our root is now on the fifth string and our fifth is on the third string. Now where we might hear these two chords together we might sound like this. A major chord in first inversion to a major chord in root position where if, if this were to be called a G chord, this would be D over F sharp, or a slash chord. When we see a chord with a slash chord, the second letter, the F sharp, is the note that's in the bass. Here we have F sharp, D, A. Of course, that will change where we're using it in different parts of the neck, but just to hear those two back to back, how they might work together. Now the major chord in second inversion, where the fifth is in the bass, looks like this. If you go back to looking at what the major shape looked like, our major chord in second inversion looks like this. Five, seven, eight. Let me just cycle those three together. So there's not a lot of movement happening with the left hand. It's the beautiful thing of this tuning and playing chord shapes in alternate tunings in general. Now let's look at the minor shapes. So how do we make a major chord into a minor chord? We flat the third. I mentioned before on our fourth string, that's where the third of our chord is uh, when we're in root position. So if I wanna make this a minor chord, I'm gonna flat that third a half step. There we have our minor third. So this is our minor shape. Now the minor chord also has a first inversion and second version option. I have only found a couple instances where Jacob uses these so far, but I want to demonstrate them just so that you have them under your fingers. So let's think of that major chord first inversion shape that we learned. It was five, six, six. If now we're saying the third is in the bass, three, one, five, 
we flat the third to make the minor chord shape in first inversion. That's what that looks like. So now the minor chord in second inversion where the fifth is in the bass. Remember we had major to major in second inversion. Now we've got minor to minor in second inversion. Five, six, eight. Now let's take a look at the diminished chord shapes. So a diminished chord has a root, a flat third or a minor third, and a flat five. So again, starting from our major shape, five, five, seven. We went to minor by going five, five, six. So we have root, five, flat three. Now if we have to flat the five on our fifth string, we're gonna change our fingering a little bit. We're gonna go five, four, six. See, all of these shapes are usually only moving one or two fingers, a half step or a whole step. They're all super closely related. Now we also have a diminished chord in first inversion, which again means the third of the chord in the bass. It would be, in this case, a diminished chord. It would have a flat third or a minor third and a flat five. The shape looks like this. We have our flat third, our one, and our flat five. Five, seven, six. Now one last shape is the augmented shape. So far I've only found one song where he does this on acoustic guitar, but again, See how closely related it is to our major shape. Our major shape again was five, five, seven. An augmented chord has a root, a sharp five, and a major third. So we have a root and our major third already. If this fifth fret is our five, we sharp it one half step. So now our chord is five, six, seven. That's the augmented chord. Now I know all these chords that I'm playing are not in the context of a song and they're not gonna be all stacked on the same fret in a song. But I want you to see in one location how we're only moving one or two fingers to make all these variations to serve all of these complex functions without having to play these chords or learn these chords that are huge contortions for our left hand. This is way easier on our left hand and it's the way that Jacob does it too. So I wanna show you a cycle of transitioning from one chord to the next. This is not part of a chord progression, but just so you, you see the small little steps that it takes to get from one chord shape to the next. Again, they would be in different locations on the neck, but the left hand shape gets to stay very similar no matter where we land on the neck. We're gonna start with the major chord. To the minor chord. To the major in first inversion, to the major in second inversion, to the diminished in first inversion, to the diminished in root position, and back to the major again. Now let's take a look at one other shorter cycle to see how a couple of the other lesser used variations fit in. We have our major chord to our augmented chord to our minor chord in second inversion to our minor chord in first inversion, which should also be considered a major six chord, but it's just a different voicing. So again, notice, moving from one chord function to a completely different one is usually only one fret difference. Sometimes we move two fingers. This is really a gift to our left hand to not have to learn super contorted chord shapes in standard tuning. And these three notes are all that Jacob needs to do all of his voice leading on these acoustic versions of the songs. But what about the other strings, Justin? All right, let's chat about it. These top two strings are droning strings, usually played 
open without fretting them. There are occasional times where he does, but that's on a song by song basis. So usually they are there as open strings as part of the finger picking pattern that he uses over many of the chords. And when he does modulations in songs, there are specific times where he avoids using them because they don't work over the chords underneath them. Now, because we can think of the function and the name of the chords primarily based on the lowest three strings that we are playing, the top two droning strings simply serve as extensions to the chords. What are extensions? They are what make the name of the chord look more complicated. The beauty of this altered tuning, again, is that those droning strings give us the extensions without our left hand having to reach for them most of the time. And another beautiful thing is that as we move chord shapes around the neck, the function or the what the extension is of those top two strings changes in relationship to the chords beneath them. Here's a short demonstration of a phrase from Little Blue. So those droning strings work over every one of those chords until they don't when we start to modulate. And again, that's on a song by song basis. But the extensions that they add to each of those chords make the chord names look more intimidating. But we don't have to know them. Do we want to learn them? It's a good idea, but we don't have to to play these arrangements because our left hand on three strings is doing 95% of the heavy lifting. Now, yet another great thing about this alter tuning and these shapes is that we are all at different levels in terms of proficiency on guitar. Jacob is finger picking with his right hand. You may have finger picking down and you may be fine to just kind of free style it, but many of you may not be. And so by being able to play the chord shapes with our left hand, we can now adapt how we use our right hand, whether you're a strummer or a finger picker, we get to choose how we play this song. My song lessons, both in Little Blue and other ones to come, are not about teaching you all the right hand technique. Technique is something that is no substitute for time for getting our right hand to do exactly what we want it to do. However, because we can learn the chord shapes, Use your right hand in whatever way suits your proficiency. Now we can call this finger style guitar. Jacob is finger picking. I would say it's not necessarily finger style guitar. Finger style guitar is typically one where there's moving bass lines, mel melodic lines on the high strings. A little more complex where you have to play particular notes at particular times to keep the melody of the guitar part going. Here we have the luxury of just getting the chord shapes on those lower three strings and letting the droning strings provide this extra floatiness over the top of the chords. Now, if you wanted to look up kind of true finger style where the, the melody and everything is all intertwined, where the right hand has really got to be far more specific, you could look up somebody like Michael Hedges and look for live footage of him playing something like Ragamuffin to give you an idea of kind of the difference here, which is what gives us freedom to not have to be overly specific with our right hand. So on all my future video tutorials on Jacob's songs, we will primarily be using all these shapes that we just covered, but in different places on the neck to suit the progression. I will also have transcription charts available through my Patreon page. And these transcriptions are not technically difficult to play, meaning they're not right hand focused. They are about teaching you the shapes and the chord progression and the rhythm in which Jacob changes from one chord to the next in that particular song. Because we know Jacob never really plays the same thing twice because he can. So he doesn't play it the same way all the time. So we don't have to be overly concerned with his right hand as much as we should be focused on harmonically what he's doing with his left hand and the chord shapes. A note for note transcription is not what most of us need because it's just more challenging for your right hand technique and we just want to be able to play these songs we love, right? So you can think of the transcriptions and charts more as a harmonic arrangement 
than a fingerstyle arrangement. You don't have to be a master technician on guitar to play a master musician's works. So one last thing I want to touch on is what to do with this third string that Jacob does not have on his five string guitar. Now older videos of him playing acoustic guitar, he has a six string guitar, so we know that it's, it's in there somewhere. So I recommend that third string being tuned to a G most of the time, but depending on the song, and I'll get more specific on this when I'm actually doing a tutorial on individual songs, whether or not to change that tuning. But in general, the starting place is just letting your index finger kind of rest against it to mute it. Now, it sounds like a technical thing that we have to do, but what we want to avoid is letting that open G string drone over a chord that it's not intended to be over because it's going to change the extension or the harmonic function of that chord. Now it works over when that string is the third of the chord, in this case, let's say an E minor chord. It works as the octave of the root over a G chord. It also works as the five of a C chord. That's going to be on a song by song basis. Many of his songs have a capo on them. So when he goes high, if you don't have the range to do that, we always have that option to just simply lower the capo. Songs like Sun is in your eyes, Time to rest your weary head, that, those are capoed on four, so we've got some room to lower. Um, Hideaway is capoed on six. We've got, again, room to lower. Little Blue was capoed on one, and he goes high. We only have one fret if we take the capo off. We've, we're only gaining a half step there. So an example there so that we can play the song using the shapes we've learned, but get it in a lower key for our voice. This is where we might have to try a slightly different tuning. All we need to maintain is the same relationship from string to string to be able to use all the same chord shapes and all the same drones. So a lower equivalent of this D, A, E, G, A, D tuning would be to lower five of the six strings down one whole step. Why five strings? Let me show you real quick. So what I want to do is I want to lower my first, second, fourth, fifth, and sixth string down a whole step. So my let's start with this fifth string because I can be an octave above that G. Now I'm going to lower the fourth string down a whole step back to the original D that it would have been in standard. Now I'll lower the sixth string down a whole step to C. Lower the second string down a whole step from A to G. And this is going to be unison with the G string that we already have. And lastly, the first string down a whole step to C. So what we've done, we've left our third string G and we've lowered another string to be in unison with it. Now in the original D, A, E, G, A, D tuning, we talked about how we'd have to avoid or mute that third G string. But now because we've lowered everything else to be around it, that G string is now the same as our second string, which was part of the, one of the fair drones that we can use. Now we simply have a unison on one of our drones and all of our chord shapes are the same because we've maintained the relationship of the tuning from one string to the next. There's our major shape and the relationship of the top two droning strings in relation to the lower strings is, has stayed the same. Now we simply have two open G strings in unison which makes either one of them available to us as one of our drones. So if you're interested in learning better and quicker ways to get in and out of these tunings and how to get there with or without a tuner, check out the jam play video that I did on teaching how to tune using harmonics. It'll show you a really cool way to get in and out of these tunings quickly and accurately. All right, 
We are resurfacing. We are coming up for air. I hope you're still with me. My intention in this tutorial and for all future tutorials about Jacob's songs is not to teach you how to play like Jacob. I want to give you the freedom to play like you, but using his chord vocabulary and finding an easier way to do that on the guitar. What is special about Jacob's music is what he hears and how he injects it with feeling. The feeling is entirely his own. However, I want you to learn about how to use the chords and inject them with your own feeling. What's more important than what he's doing with his right hand is why he plays the way he does. I want you to pay more attention to his use of dynamics and emotion than his technique. This is the difference between being an emulator and an imitator. To emulate something is to try to be as good or successful at something, to be like something. To imitate is to do as he does, to do exactly the same thing. So I want you to use inspiration to find your own voice. Otherwise, we will always end up as a paler shade of our heroes. This is where I like the quote, from the book, Steal Like an Artist. If you steal from one, you're a copycat. If you steal from a hundred and blend all that you've learned, you will be original and have a sound all your own. I'm gonna to continue to roll out guitar tutorials for Jacob's acoustic versions of his songs. Smash that like button, click the bell notification to stay tuned when they are released. And for any songwriters out there, check the link for Master Writer Songwriting Software Program for a 20% discount. There's also a QR code that you can use as well. It's a great way to store your ideas, record your ideas, use rhyming dictionaries, and all sorts of other resources to make writing songs easier. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next Deep Dive.